In Total Revenue Service IRS Tax News, IRS issues guidance on state tax payments to help taxpayers. Oh no, we're being guided by the IRS again. That's not good. That's like being guided by like Freddy Krueger, man. Or infinitely worse, like being guided by like Sam Smith. Okay, okay, now you've gone too far. Even hyperbole has its limits. I mean, the IRS isn't that scary. I honestly... Being dragged in to face an IRS audit is nothing compared to the horrible thought of being dragged in and forced to watch the Grammys. You know, I mean, that'd be terrible. That'd be, that'd be like having to face one of those Harry Potter Dementor things that like suck your soul out through your face, you know, like right out of your nose, like they do in like that Harry Potter video game. What, what's that, Phil? I'm a hate-filled jerk for playing the Harry Potter video game. Well, actually, Phil, it wasn't me. It was my daughter who was playing the game. Oh, come on, Phil. How can she be an evil turf? She's only nine. She, she doesn't know what you're talking about, Phil. And J.K. Rowling's is her favorite author. Oh, I see, Phil. You don't care. And if she's playing the Harry Potter video game, she deserves to die. And in the name of tolerance, you're calling on the mob to storm my home to take my nine-year-old turf daughter's head? Yeah. That, 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 seem, that seems awfully harsh, Phil. I mean, <laughs> I, I don't mean to be insensitive about your feelings on the matter or anything. And I know that this is going to get me in trouble, you know, with the HR department again. But, like, I feel like calling on the storming of my home and the decapitation of my nine-year-old daughter because she plays Harry Potter. Is, it's a little extreme, Phil. I'm, I'm not, I'm just saying. I don't mean to be, I'm just, I'm not trying to be rude. I'm just saying it seems, ex oh, I see. You don't care and you're filling out an HR complaint about my hateful comments as we speak. Well, whatever, whatever. Go, you just go ahead and do that then, Phil. It's, not, it's nothing I haven't seen before. What? What's that, Phil? J.K. Rowling's will be financially ruined after the righteous boycott. She should have taken our advice like all the other IPs. You know, like Star Wars, Marvel, and Scooby-Doo, if she wanted her Harry Potter revenue to continue. What you just said is one of the most insanely idiotic things I have ever heard. At no point in your rambling, incoherent response were you even close to anything that could be considered a rational thought? Everyone in this room is now dumber for having listened to it. I award you no points, and may God have mercy on your soul. IR 2023-23, February 10th, 2023, Washington. The Internal Revenue Service provided details today clarifying the federal tax status involving special payments made by 21 states in 2022. The IRS has determined that in the interest of sound tax administration and other factors, taxpayers in many states will not need to report these payments on their 2022 tax returns. So that you would think would generally be a good thing. In other words, the general rule for an income tax type of system is that income is actually bad for taxes because if you have to report the income, then of course it's likely that you'll be paying taxes on the income. The general rule with regards to whether or not you have to report the income is that you do, unless the IRS has a specific exception uh, saying that you don't have to record it. That's how it generally is laid out uh, in the tax code. So. Uh, here, if you have something that you can be considered as income, an inflow of cash in some way, shape, or form that doesn't need to be recorded on the tax return, then that, of course, could be a good thing. So during a review, the IRS determined it will not challenge the taxability of payments related to general welfare and disaster relief. Uh, this means that people in the following states did not need to report these state payments on their 2022 tax return. So California, Colorado, Connecticut, uh, Delaware, Florida, Hawaii, Idaho, Illinois, Indiana, Maine, New Jersey, New Mexico, New York, Oregon, Pennsylvania, Rhode Island, 
Uh, Alaska is in this group as well, but please see below for more nuanced information. So Alaska, they got a bit of an exception, it seems. So in addition, many people in Georgia, Massachusetts, South Carolina, and Virginia also will not include state payments in income for federal tax purposes if they meet certain requirements. Okay, here we go with the exception. I knew it. I knew there'd be one. For these individuals, state payments will not be included for federal tax purposes if the payment is a refund of state taxes paid and either the recipient claimed the standard deduction or itemized their deductions but did not receive a tax benefit. So you've got kind of this issue with regards to the state tax payments that uh, you, you're probably aware of or have some concept of in that for the federal government side of things, uh, the state taxes sometimes might be a deduction. Now, they would only be a deduction if you're taking itemized deductions, which usually means that's going to be a higher income uh, individuals and more people than usual or more people than like a few years ago uh, actually take the standard deduction. Most people take the standard deduction now because the thought process was to simplify the code. They would increase the size of the standard deduction and have less of these kind of itemized things. So everything's kind of standardized uh, for everyone. But the problem is that if you take a deduction for your state taxes on the federal tax return as an itemized deduction, it's possible that you kind of overstate it because you then get a refund from the state. And so you can imagine people trying to cheat on the tax return basically by saying, I'm going to overpay my state taxes, deduct it on the federal tax return, and then I'm going to get a refund from the state taxes. So I didn't really pay that amount of the state taxes. So basically, if you got a benefit for the taxes in the prior year, then uh, you might have to you know, record it because you got a deduction for it. You might have to record it basically as income uh, in the following year uh, if you got if you got like a refund on it. So that's the so that kind of throws a wrench into some of the some of the workings of this. And in my opinion, if if they if they started the tax code over from scratch, they should have set up a system where they weren't deducting state taxes on the federal side because that messes up the whole thing. But of course, now that the tax law is already in place, if they just pull the rug out, then it kind of messes things up. And you can see which states would benefit from this. Obviously, states that have a high tax are kind of taking advantage. You, I would, you know, I think it could clearly be argued of the state tax deduction because it's kind of a way that you can subsidize, you know, from the federal government by deducting, by deducting it. And so those would be like California, New York, for example. So the IRS appreciates the patience of taxpayers, tax professionals, uh, software companies, and state tax administrators as the IRS Treasury worked to resolve this unique and complex situation. The IRS is aware of questions involving special tax refunds or payments made by certain states related to the pandemic and its associated consequences in 2022. A variety of state programs distributed these payments in 2022 and the rules surrounding their treatment for federal income tax purposes are complex. Yeah, I would think so. While in general payments made by states are included, includable in income for federal tax purposes, so usually when you get unemployment and stuff from the state, it's taxable, there are exceptions that would apply to many of the payments made by states in 2022. So because of all these changes in the law and these different kind of state payments and whatnot, the IRS looks like just for ease, for the ease of it, <laughs> is trying to say, well, we're just going to give up on those particular payments. So to assist taxpayers who have received these payments, file their returns in a timely fashion. The IRS is providing the additional information below. So you got the refund of state taxes paid. If the payment is a refund of state taxes paid and either the, the recipient claimed the standard deduction or itemized deduction, their deductions but did not receive a tax benefit, for example, because the $10,000 tax deduction limit so that's another issue with regards to the to the to the itemized deduction of the state taxes. They capped them at ten thousand dollars. So you would think wealthy, more wealthy individuals would be the ones that are itemizing that might be able to deduct the state taxes. But then it was like you guys are getting way too out of hand on the state tax thing, and certain states seems like they're kind of taking advantage of it. So they kind of capped it at the ten thousand, which was a big 
uh, issue from state to state on, on different taxes. And so you might not be getting a benefit from the state tax deduction, either because your standardized deduction, you're not itemizing, or because you are itemizing, but your income is high enough that, that now you don't get the benefit because you went over the $10,000 of the deductible amount on the itemized deduction. See, it gets quite complex quite quickly. So the payment is not included in income for federal tax purposes if you didn't get the benefit in the prior year from the deduction. Okay, payments from the following states in 2022 fall in these categories and will include from income for federal tax purposes unless, so what, once more time, Payments from the following states in 2022 fall in this category and will be excluded from income for federal tax purposes unless the recipient received a tax benefit and the year the taxes were deducted. So you got Georgia, Massachusetts, South Carolina, Virginia. So general welfare and disaster relief payments. If a payment is made for the promotion of the general welfare or as a disaster relief payment, for example, related to the outgoing pandemic, it may be excludable from income for federal tax purposes under the general welfare doctrine or a qualified disaster relief payment. Determining whether payments qualify for these exceptions is a complex fact uh, intensive inquiry that depends on a number of circumstances. Well, that's thank you for clarifying that one. So the IRS has reviewed the types of payments made by various states in 2022 that may fall in these categories. And given the compl complicated fact specific nature of determining the treatment of these payments for federal tax purposes, balanced against the need to provide certainty and clarity for individuals who are now attempting to file their federal income tax returns, the IRS has determined that in the best interest of sound tax administration and given the fact that the pandemic emergency declaration is ending in May 2023, making this an issue only for 2022 tax year, if a taxpayer does not include the amount of one of these payments in its 2022 income for federal income tax purposes, the IRS will not challenge the treatment of the 2022 payment as excludable for income on an ongoing or amended return. Wow, that was one sentence right there. That like paragraph was like one sentence. I'm out of breath at this point in time. So that sounded like a very long winded way of saying that they're backing off a bit on that one. It sounds like, but you know, you make your own judgment. Payment from the following states uh, fall in this category and the IRS will not challenge the treatment of these payments as excludable for federal income tax purposes in 2022. You got Alaska, California, Colorado, Connecticut, Delaware, Florida, Hawaii, Idaho, Illinois, uh, Indiana, Maine, New Jersey, New Mexico, New York, Oregon, Pennsylvania, Rhode Island. For a list of the specific payments to which these applies, please see the chart. So there's a chart you can link to that and say, what in the world are you talking about? All right, and then you can look at that. So and there's a link to that. Other payments. Other payments that may have been made by states are generally includable in income for federal income tax purposes. This includes the annual payment of Alaska's permanent fund a dividend and any payments from states provided as compensation to workers. So uh, only the supplement energy relief payment received in addition to the annual permanent fund divided. These are some, some footnotes down here. So you got some footnotes. I won't go into the footnotes, but you know, you could check them out if you want to read this on your own. So hopefully that, uh, that clears everything up. I'm sure everyone questions answered, problems solved and everything is we know what we know what to do i know what to do now after that but if you're still confused there'll be a link to this in the description and you can link to the links that are here and you can read up on it more and most likely confuse yourself further